In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to use some existing drawings that we've created using some dimensional and geometric constraints as a dynamic block. Now, there's some special things that we have to do in order to do this. So, let's just kind of take a look. Right here I have a drawing that we actually created in a previous, a previous lesson. And we can see that I've added several dimensional constraints to it. So, if I, for instance, take this dimension right here and I just drag it, that dimensional constraint, everything kind of stretches in proportion. And that's because we had previously went and set up all of these dimensional constraints to tell uh, how far we want the circles to be off the line and the diameters and different things like that. So as we stretch, basically the width, then the height changes, the, but the, uh, the relationship of the holes to the edges stays the same and things like that. All right, so if we wanted to make this a block, uh, and more specifically a dynamic block, we can do that. Let's take a look at how we would go about doing that. Um, the first thing we would we would want to do is we would wanna, we would want to block this drawing or, or these uh, objects. All right, so I'm going to go over here to the Insert tab, and I'm going to say Create a Block, and I'm going to just call it um, for right now. I'm just going to call it B1. I'm going to have to select a base point as we do with all blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a point and I'm just going to pick down here in the lower left hand corner and I'm going to select my objects. And I'm going to select all the objects here and then I'm going to tell it OK. And before I tell it OK I'm going to make sure that, that, that my little check box is here for open and block editor. So I'm going to tell it OK and here we have all of our um, our, we have our geometry plus we have these dimensional constraints that we had before. Now I'm going to show you another little tip real quick and this is a great tip, uh, I mean a great new feature in AutoCAD 2010 and that's the ability to test a block before we kind of apply it to our drawing. So let's just test this block. I'm going to come up here to my little test block button and we see what our block is going to look like when we insert it into the drawing. So if we wanted to kind of just see how it works with our uh, the constraints uh, that we had kind of defined in there, I'm going to select the block, but you're going to see that nothing happens. I don't have my um, arrows. I can't drag anything. All I have is this insertion point, and that's not what we were looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and close this test block, and that's the cool thing about this test block um, window. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to fix this block. Basically, you cannot use the dimensional constraints that you used in your parametric design tab in your dynamic blocks. If you go to your dynamic blocks ribbon, you'll see that you have some dimensional constraints uh, listed here that we can use when we define these blocks. Now, rather than go and redefine all these dimensional constraints, there is a command the button's right here, and this allows us to convert a dimensional constraint into a constraint parameter. So I'm going to select that, and now what I can do is I can go and select each one of these values. Now unfortunately, you do have to pick each one. If you try to do a crossing or if you try to select all or anything like that, it won't allow you to do it. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to select all these objects. And once I've got them selected, I can go again go and test my block. And now you will see that I have my grips and I have the ability to drag and everything works the way that it did previously in, uh, in the drawing before we made it a block. So now those dimensional constraints are at work in our block. So I'm going to close the test block and I'm going to go ahead and close the block editor. I'm going to tell it to save the changes to B1. And now we see that we have our block. It's because we told it to, con con to convert the block and keep it in the drawing. And now instead of having the drawing where we see all the dimensional constraints and everything, we just have this block in here. And it operates the same way as our uh, drawing did originally. And so we can copy this block around. We can use it all throughout the drawing. And then whenever we need to, we can always go and redefine it by going back into the block editor and making any changes that we'd like to make. Okay, so that's how you use a drawing that you already defined 
uh, to have dimensional constraints. That's how you use it as a dynamic block. Basically, you got to convert those dimensional constraints into the dynamic block constraint parameters.